how many of us have rejected, shunned, or ignored medications just because the treatment is worse than the disease? How many of us have taken anti-inflammatories to come to the realization that the side effects are as worse as the disease symptoms? Breakthroughs in precision medicine and health going on at Virginia Tech are about to change this trend. Virginia Tech has a unique opportunity to profoundly change the drug development landscape in the US and globally. Let the food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, who is portrayed as the paragon, as the ancient Greek physician, had a clear understanding of the connections between food and medicine, the medicinal value of foods. This concept is at the very core of nutritional immunology research that Virginia Tech is pioneering. Yet, this ancient principle of utilizing nutrition and foods as medicine is only benefiting right now about 8% of the US population. Only about 8% of us are, for instance, taking the five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables that are recommended. The remaining 92% of the population is under that. Biocomplexity. This picture is at the very core of biocomplexity. It illustrates the interactions between diet and foods, where we have hundreds, maybe thousands of choices every day. Trillions of bacteria in our intestines and complex biochemical pathways that drive the use of those nutrients in our intestines, which are intimately connected with an immune system that can choose to be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. When these systems get out of sync, when there's a dysregulation at any of these levels, then disease follows. And the gut, the dysregulated gut, the gut that is out of balance, has us running to the hospital. And I'll talk now about Assad, but a very real example of Stu Walker. Stu Walker is a young man from West Yorkshire, England. He wants to be normal. He seems healthy. However, a stew is not normal. A stew requires feeding through a tube in his nose. A stew has a colostomy bag connected to his abdomen and to his gut. A stew is one of four million people, of individuals worldwide, afflicted by inflammatory bowel disease. An autoimmune disease without a cure and with two clinical manifestations. Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. Current treatments for IBD are modestly successful. In some cases, 30 to 40% of patients benefit from those treatments. The side effects are severe, ranging from infection to cancer to death. The cost of these medications is about $50,000 per patient per year. Yes, you heard it right. $50,000 per patient per year. And about 70% of those patients will require surgery. In some cases, several surgeries. In fact, Stu has undergone several surgeries to deal with his IBD. This is a symptom of a broader problem which is illustrated by what we call the sideways funnel of the drug development process in the US. There's an inefficiency that is embedded in the drug development process, from discovery to preclinical testing in animals to phase one, two, three clinical testing, the process is inefficient and slow moving. Let's look at some facts and figures, some food for thought. 
about developing a drug costs about $1.2 billion. The timeline for developing a drug for Crohn's disease is about 10 to 15 years. And only one in over 10,000 molecules are going to make it. There's a cost efficiency problem. There's an inefficiency problem. And you might ask, what is our aim? Our aim is twofold. First, to find a solution for the needs of Stu Walker and the other 4 million people globally. We need to find safer and more effective medications for IBD. But second, and equally importantly, to help address the inefficiency of the drug development process. Let's think about it. How can we accomplish that? Engineers have, over the years, been using effectively modeling and simulation, the power of high-performance computing, to minimize trial and error in building airplanes, rocket launchers, even atomic bombs. The use of computational modeling, mechanistic modeling, agent-based modeling in medicine is just beginning to scratch the surface. We believe that there's an opportunity in becoming the engineers of the gut. Biochemical, biomedical researchers can become the engineers of the gut, the engineers of the immune system. We've come a long way since Hippocrates established his uh, opinion on the value of food as a medicinal concept. We've celebrated Mechnikov as the discoverer of the macrophages, one of the immune cells. Monoclonal antibodies have paved the way for targeted research on a specific pathways. Sequencing has improved performance up to 10,000-fold over the last four to five years, and cost of sequencing have steadily gone down. Computational technologies have the potential to drive the next revolution in biomedicine research and in drug discovery. We talked about biocomplexity. The intestine is a complex system. One that we must understand if we have to find, if we are able to find a cure for IBD. We have 40 trillion bacteria, 30 trillion cells, pro-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory. They can be pro-inflammatory depending on the environment or anti-inflammatory. And there's plasticity that switches from a pro to anti-inflammatory state. Believe it or not, 70 to 75% of the immune system is present in our gut. And the surface area of our gut is about the size of two tennis courts. There's trillions of interactions. And we must understand the gut and the immune system completely and in its entirety to be able to make major advances in the development of cures uh, for IBD. The spark here is the application of modeling and simulation technologies, the application of the power of high-performance computing to build models that will help Stu and the other 4 million people afflicted by IBD. Virginia Tech is leading the way on building computational models of the stomach during H. pylori infection, of the lower intestine during Clostridium difficile infection, and yes, we are also building models of inflammatory bowel disease. Not only to understand the basic fundamental mechanisms that drive the immune system to become dysregulated and destroy the intestine, but more importantly, to identify new cures for inflammatory bowel disease. Even the youngest members of this audience know how to solve the equation of 2 plus 2 equals 4. Not all of us can solve the equation listed in this slide. Well, what this is telling us that in order to make a meaningful impact on drug discovery and on the understanding of gut immunology, we need to establish teams of mathematicians, computer scientists, immunologists, formulation experts, 
clinicians and translational researchers. And this research is going on here at Virginia Tech. This is a clear example of a destination uh, for the university. We have utilized these modeling technologies, some of them similar to what Google is utilizing on its engine, in its searches. Others that are ordinary differential equations or agent-based modeling to go from experimental data to dissecting the whole organism, the tissue, the cells, and the molecules. And these analyses allow us to identify new therapeutic targets. One such example of those promising therapeutic targets is lanthionin synthetase like 2 discovered here at Virginia Tech, and a promising avenue to find a cure for inflammatory bowel disease. LANCL2 intercepts inflammatory bowel disease at two levels. First, it suppresses the pro-inflammatory mediators linked to IBD, and next, it amplifies the anti-inflammatory response. This technology is gaining momentum and has uh, been validated by the National In Institutes of Health, the American Gastroenterology Association, and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. You don't need to be a board-certified pathologist to understand that there's a difference between these two pictures. On your left, we have an intestine from a mouse with IBD. The wall is thicker. The architecture is deranged. There's infiltration of inflammatory cells. On the right, we have an intestine of a mouse with IBD that has been treated with a new drug that targets lanthionine synthetase like 2. The new drug is called BT11. And what that drug does is make those thins of the, of the intestine be thinner, less inflammatory cell infiltration and maintenance of the architecture. We can take modeling one step further. We can design the next generation of human clinical trials. We are using clinical information from electronic health records, biological data, demographic information, immunological data sets to build avatars Populations of patients with inflammatory bowel disease, specifically Crohn's disease, where we can test not only existing drugs, but new drugs are just BT11. And we've, we have accomplished that uh, here. Those are the results of comparing our new drug, BT11, which in mouse studies showed efficacy at 8 milligrams per kilo and safety in doses as high as 1,000 milligrams per kilo, test it in human avatars. And what this data shows is that BT11 outperforms current standard of care as well as drugs in development. We've come a long way from Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food, to modeling, simulation, and leveraging the power of high-performance computing. We've built a product development platform that is applicable to the development of IBD drugs, but has the potential to be applied to other diseases, such as type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, type 2 diabetes. We have embarked on a journey of a faster path to cures. We have embarked on a journey not only to address the symptoms of the disease and the discomfort caused by inflammatory bowel disease, but also to address the inefficiency of the drug development process by leveraging the power of modeling and simulation. And we are honored to be able to tell Stu Walker, his family, and his friends, as well as the four million other people afflicted by IBD, that hope is on the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>